Hi everyone. I want to talk a little bit about ER collets. Uh, now if you haven't used ER collets, you may want to look into them. They are a fantastic choice for a lot of different work holding solutions, especially on the mill, but increasingly on the lathe as well. I have these ER collet chucks, and I have several of these uh, that fit into the mill. And the way the collets work is it's a double angled collet, as you can see. There's a clamping nut here. This little uh, groove is actually for an eccentric ring that's on the inside of the clamping nut. And hopefully you can see it. Uh, it's off center and the collet actually snaps into that ring and it captures the collet so it's not going to fall out. And that's what's also used to extract the collet when you loosen it up. Once you extract the collet, you just have to angle it one way or the other and it will pop out of that groove. Uh, there's actually a lot of spring in these collets and the great thing about them is they collapse by an entire millimeter. This is a 3 8 imperial size but it's 9 to 10 millimeters. Uh, so it's going to be oversized 3 8 and it will collapse that entire range between 9 and 10. That it makes it a fantastic and rigid choice for holding drills because you can hold any size of drill and it actually retains very good concentricity in that range. It's also a really good option for holding taps. Taps tend to have slightly oversized shanks so you can get this in there and uh, crank it down and it'll hold the tap very nicely and concentrically and a lot more rigidly than a drill chuck because you're holding almost all the way around the surface with the exception of those slits instead of just at three points. So your tap is a lot less likely to slip. Now like any collet system there is a weakness. Uh, ER collet chucks are not very good at holding short objects. You really want to have something going all the way through the collet uh, or at least most of the way through the collet in order for it to hold rigidly. Uh, with a really short object uh, it'll squeeze down more at that free end and you're not actually holding very securely at the spot where you should be. Now once you get these together then you can actually start squeezing down the collet pretty easily and you put your part in there you can see it's quite loose Oops. and get that squeezed down by hand first and you can see it's actually holding pretty well whenever you buy one of these chucks it comes with a little spanner wrench like this and they're very serviceable um, but I find that in use it tends to kind of ding up the corners of these slots here. You can buy an ER collet wrench like this and this has got four lugs that fit into the slots. They are unique to the size of clamping nut. So this is specifically for ER32. If you had a different size you just have to get a different wrench. They're easy to find um, and not terribly expensive. You can see there's quite a length difference here between these two wrenches, the one that comes with the chuck and this guy. So you can really wang on this sucker a lot harder. And you really do want to get these collets quite tight. There is a, a specific torque setting on each size uh, and they have um, collet wrenches that actually are torque wrenches as well. Uh, they're just quite expensive so I don't own one of those. I also have a collet holder for the tailstock of my lathe. Uh, these are available in lots of different shank styles. You can get them in straight shanks like this one back here that I have in a boring bar holder for my lathe. You may have seen this in a couple of videos. Um, but this one I think was originally for a mill that uses a Morse taper because it has a threaded hole down here. And I just put a plug in there so that I could actually remove it with my, um, with my tailstock screw. I believe these are available with shanks as well, but I don't think I could find one at the time. It takes the exact same collet as my other ones. I basically, the first collet chuck that I bought was an ER32. Uh, so every collet chuck that I've bought since has also been an ER32 just to match. So I don't have to buy an entirely new set of collets. There are a lot of different sizes. They have very small ones like ER16 and there's ER20. Um, ER32 is very common. 
Lately I've been seeing a proliferation of ER collet chucks for the lathe where it's just a plate that goes onto a back plate and just the shank portion of this and then you get your ER collet in there. And I think those are usually ER40 which is a little bit bigger. Um, those go up to about 25 millimeters I believe in size. ER32 tops out at 20 millimeters or a little bit more than three quarters of an inch. I don't know the sizes of these off the top of my head, so I'll go ahead and just type them out right here in sweet, sweet readable text. Like I said, there are straight shank ones as well, and this one I use for holding boring bars and drills on my lathe so I could use power feed on them. Um, and you may have seen this in my video where I made some little magnet stems because uh, I used this to hold an end mill so that I could use it as a boring bar. The straight shank ones in various sizes are actually incredibly useful, especially on the mill when you need just a little bit more reach. Another really fantastic advantage to these is you can take this out of the spindle and then switch over to a drill chuck or a different ER collet chuck with a different tool. And when you put this back in, you still know where the end of your tool is. You get that advantage with end mill holders as well, but they're a fixed size, so you can't hold the wide range of tools that you could in an ER collet chuck. When I first bought my ER collet chuck, I went with ER32 and I've stuck with that. And the reason I went with it is because it did up to three quarters and that was pretty much all I was doing. Um, and I bought it for my lathe because the three jaw chuck was so incredibly horrible that I pretty much exclusively used my four jaw. Now, I wanted to get into using collets because they're faster and they're more accurate, and especially if I was using a four jaw chuck, I didn't want to have to sit there and dial a part in every single time. So I got the ER collet chuck because I could get one of these straight shank holders for around $100, and it was a, it was a pretty fantastic tool to use, and I used it for many years until I got the 5C collet chuck on my lathe. If I had to do that over again, I probably would have gone back in time, slapped myself around a little bit, and told myself to get an ER40. Especially on the mill, it would be really handy to be able to hold larger shank tooling in this. I already have the capacity to hold 3 quarter inch tools in my mill with just the R8 collets, but at the time I didn't have a mill, so I wasn't thinking about that. I've also really been toying with the idea of getting at least a couple of the straight shank ER16s because I think you can hold up to a half inch in those and that's most of my end mills. And a lot of times I need something with a little bit more reach uh, just to get where I'm going where I don't have to keep dropping the knee and raising the knee when I use a drill chuck in conjunction with the end mills. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any questions or comments or just want to tell me what your favorite Steely Dan tune is, leave those down in the comments below. Also, consider going over to Patreon and checking out my new Patreon page. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.